Hi guys, this is Scott, your Northwest Geology Guy, and today I'm doing another uh, viewer request. This one's from Matt Pope, and Matt wanted to know about the Snake River Plain. And when I was doing my research on this, I thought, you know, I could easily add in the Columbia basalt floods that happened in Oregon, mostly in Washington, and a little bit in Idaho. But let's start off first talking about the Snake River Plain. This diagram shows it over the last 16 million years as it's progressed to the northeast to its present day location here in Wyoming at Yellowstone National Park. And um, down here uh, was kind of one of the smaller eruptions 16 million years ago. But um, actually there's evidence showing now that it goes all the way back out into the ocean um, and about 55 million years ago, it uh, created what was called Silencia, which was a great big chocolate gumdrop sitting off uh, the coast of Washington and Oregon and Idaho. And that actually accreted onto uh, the north, uh, the northwest. And um, there's still some uh, bedrock from it. Basalt tends to erode away pretty quickly, but there are still some uh, parts of the bedrock that are uh, traceable back to Silencia. But that's getting a little off the, the beaten path. But uh, 16 million years ago, when the hotspot was down here in uh, Nevada, a little bit into Oregon, um, I'll show you in the next slide uh, where fissures opened up that went all the way that progressed all the way up into Washington and Idaho. Okay, now this diagram shows you uh, down here where the hot spot actually started coming up in two different locations and uh, opened up fissures that extended up all the way up in here into uh, eastern Washington and a little bit over here in, uh, this one doesn't show up, but I've seen other graphs here that show a couple uh, fissures that opened up here in Idaho. But um, most of the lava floods uh, occurred in the 16 million to 15 million year, and it dumped miles of uh, lava on the state. And uh, actually, it created so much lava here that it's depressed the crust down because uh, they're only at uh, roughly 2,500 uh, feet in elevation. But uh, some uh, oil companies did some drilling over here, and they went down almost three to five miles and were still in bedrock, I mean, still in uh, basalt. So they gave up drilling for uh, petroleum. But um, you can tell that the depth of it is not reflected in the altitude so that meant that the crust had been depressed down from all the way to the basalt lava and we're talking about 300 to 350 lava different lava flows and it uh, stayed liquid and ran all the way out uh, down the Columbia River and out into the Pacific Ocean and created some uh, little tiny uh, islands out here uh, in the Pacific that ended up getting docked onto Oregon. But uh, in these fissures, I mean, it's a really nice story. And uh, in a little while, I'll uh, refer you back to Nick Zentner from Central Washington University, one of my mentors that got me started in this. Uh, just love following his work. And he does a fantastic uh, hour video on the floods, and he does this way better than I could. He's been teaching geology there for 25 years, so he's got it kind of down pat. But um, I was able, now two years ago, uh, I took my uh, daughter and the four grandkids uh, down to uh, Disneyland and uh, Universal Studios, and then we drove over uh, to the Grand Canyon and got to spend about five, six hours there. I would like to spend about five or six days there, but I had to get the kids back. Uh, my daughter was running out of money. But uh, we were coming up through uh, parts of uh, Oregon and Idaho, weaving back and forth up the roads. And I was out actually able to see 
uh, some of the outcrops of basalt because it's not as heavy down here as it is up in uh, eastern Washington. And uh, there's little outcrops of basalts where I later found out, because we didn't stop, that those were areas that uh, are from splatter uh, from the, the fissure that just looked like a little uh, long stretch of uh, basalt, um, which is actually so brittle, you can just actually peel off some of the pieces of the spatter um, from when it opened up. But it was really, really cool. Uh, I wish I would have take, been able to take more pictures of it, but uh, my camera got stolen, so I can't do any more with that. But uh, let me show you here the next slide. Okay, now on this one here, uh, this is an article uh, I wanted to talk about a little bit, and I'll put a description in the links below. And, uh, wait, no, I'll put the links in the description below. There we go. And uh, it talks about something that I had uh, theorized a long time ago, that in all the calderas, the past calderas, you know, the, the hot spot never moves. That's stationary. And as uh, North America uh, slowly uh, creeps to the southwest, it, run, it ran over the hot spot and continues to move to the southwest. And it's like uh, putting a piece of paper over a blowtorch and slightly moving it. You're going to see that the burn marks uh, go uh, to the northeast like uh, they do it uh, all the way to Yellowstone. And I thought, you know, with that hot spot moving underneath uh, the continental crust, it's ha had to really uh, damage the crust uh, between the lithosphere and uh, the surface. And this kind of talks about that, and it goes into some pretty deep stuff, but I didn't want to get into that because I, I don't want to lose you guys and have you click off the video before it finishes. But um, if you want to go back uh, and, and read this whole article here, it gets uh gets pretty good down here uh how they tested the the heat sources and stuff and uh uh a couple hundred uh boreholes that they took uh the temperatures and um and talks about damaging of the lithosphere so uh i'll go ahead and leave that in the description box for you guys if you want to read on it and let's go to the next one okay now this is the youtube video from uh nick um, like I told you earlier, that it's about an uh, hour and two minutes long, really worth your, uh, your time to watch, especially for all you addicts like me, uh, that just can't get enough of geology. Um, Nick is funny. He's not boring, very informational, uh, with uh, all the stuff he shows you that he goes to chalk drawings, then he goes to, to visuals and really gets in depth with it. And... If you really like him, he is all over the internet. He has Nick on the Rocks uh, on PBS, now uh, like a 10-minute show, I think it is, something like that, 15-minute show. And uh, he's got his two-minute geology video series. He's got the Ice Age Flood theories or series. And he's, he gives free lectures during the wintertime over in uh, Ellensburg at the university. But... I just can't seem to get over there from Western Washington because of the passes. And actually, as I'm broadcasting to you tonight, uh, we're under uh, winter storm uh, warning. And we've already got about six inches of snow, and it's still snowing. So, uh, yeah, I, I just don't like, as I'm getting older, I don't like to drive over the passes uh, when it's snowing. But uh, definitely check him out. Check out his videos. And... Um, I'll, I'll leave this in the description box, too, for you guys, so you can go view it. And let's go on to the next one. Okay, here's a shot of Nick. Uh, he's looking at some pillow lava from the uh, basalt floods that uh, happened uh, over around in the Columbia River area. And this will be for a future uh, video. It's really interesting um, for the... Um, Ice Age uh, floods that happened over there, too. And um, pillow lava can only be, uh, be formed underwater. Some of you may have seen uh, some of the geology uh, 
uh, shows about uh, Hawaii and the new uh, island that's forming and it shows how the lava comes out of the ground and it starts to spiral into like a, a big round pillow and that can only happen underwater because uh, of the buoyancy of the water and uh, lava but let's go on to the next one of uh, his now here's Nick over here uh, showing you uh, the pillars uh, that can reach up to 50 feet tall um, they uh, grind I mean they dry into uh, an octagon shape on top just like a mud puddle when it dries out you see how it cracks apart well these were like one lava flow and I'll show you another one but see in comparison uh, Nick is uh, pretty well over six foot tall he's a big guy and and look at this this is just crazy but let me go on and show you the different one of his okay I guess I've shown you of all of his but now see here you can see uh, on the screen this is the top of the pillars um, and you can see how they all cracked in an octagon shape now uh, one of his videos he was talking about it and he's sitting on top of it and he's uh, tapping each rock with his rock hammer and he goes to set it down it bounces and falls in between the pillars and goes all the way down to the bottom and you know it was kind of a nice little blooper but uh, yeah that isn't going to be recovered anytime soon but it's kind of neat how uh, this probably took hundreds of years to um, cool all the way through and that's why they tend to crack like that when they start to dry out but when it flooded you know 50 feet uh, thick of uh, basalt uh, it takes a while to, to have that thing cooled all the way down but uh, I just find that really super neat uh, uh, how it forms like that and that's not the only place in the world uh, that is formed it's happened in Ireland, uh, I believe somewhere in Africa. I can't remember where, but it's happened a few other places on the planet. But this tends to happen when you get a very thick uh, flow of uh, basalt that just, like I said, takes uh, 100, 200 years for it all to cool down and slowly start to crack apart as it, uh, as it cools down. All right, let me go on to the next one. Okay, this is an image here. Uh, one of the the walls of lava and if you have a good eye for geology you can discern the different levels of uh, the floods as how these are kind of blocky uh, lava floods how they kind of form in blocks and up here you have like the mini little pillars that come from a different flow um, this up here looks like it's a different flow um, you aren't able to see all 350 uh, of the lava flows because a lot of it is underground um, unless you dig down alongside them uh, you're not going to be able to, to see all 50 uh, or 350 of the layers but uh, I thought I'd show this to you as kind of a cool reference uh, how uh, the different flows stop and dry compared to earlier floods I thought it was worth putting up okay well, that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. Um, I try to take as many requests as I can for uh, topics to do. Um, I still have some more to do. So if you submitted something to me, don't uh, worry. I'll get to it as soon as I can. Just got over the big move and still haven't, we haven't unpacked everything yet. So I thought I'd squeeze this one in since I uh, came home early from work before all the heavy snow uh, hit on us. But um, please like, subscribe if you're new to this channel, and try to share it with your friends that you know that are really into geology. And you'd be surprised at how many of your friends actually find this pretty interesting that really don't know a lot about it, but it just looks pretty cool. So I will be back uh, in a day or two and with another topic, something interesting. And you all have a good night, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.